uh, how's your day been, and uh, how have you been holding up throughout uh, all the chaos that's going on right now in the world? Uh, I've just, I really haven't been out, dude. I mean, it, it really ain't changed a whole lot for me. I don't really do a whole lot anyways. Like, if I'm not working or training, I'm usually at home just sitting here, you know, watching sports. That's all about all I do. Or just um, going out, you know, going out with my girlfriend, whatnot, and some teammates or whatnot, uh, traveling for work, you know, a little bit again going up to Nashville, getting some work in up there and stuff. How was, uh, how has training been as a whole? I'm up in Canada, so stuff's still kind of like shut down here. We, uh, jujitsu's closed. Uh, so how has that been for, uh, for your training? Uh, for, like, I had, I was supposed to have a fight back in March, uh, yeah. back in March and I was, it was in Chattanooga against Charlie Alexander and, uh, that one got canceled due to COVID. So like right then and there, like after that, the gyms all shut down and yeah, I was waiting for everything just to get back to normal. And uh, it just now recently, like we still aren't really back to normal yet, but um, I'm still able to get into the gym. I have been able to get in the gym for the last like four weeks to get in there and do some sparring sessions with, uh, with everybody there. And that's, uh, I go to a Gogi out of Chattanooga. So like we've had a lot of, a lot of different looks and a lot of new people coming in there all the time, uh, willing to help and, uh recently like over the last you know even with that pandemic happened we had a tornado come through chattanooga and uh did a lot of damage so like you know there's a lot of fighters that would or come from different areas or all around the country like that would come here it's weird they have different jobs but uh, i ended up getting a train with a lot of high high quality guys uh from different areas of the country and uh, just because like our gym is you know one of there's like one of three gyms around in my area and they were just here in chattanooga and uh, they decided to come there. So I got a lot of good looks from a lot of good guys. Uh, not necessarily for this camp, but throughout the last, like during this pandemic, like they've just been here and we've had some private sessions, you know, because we couldn't have over so many people in the room at a time for a long time. And uh, so it was really hard because we, our gym's fairly, we, it's growing and it's getting bigger. And it's, a, it's, it's really a jujitsu based gym, but like, like you said, they've been shutting those down. So, you know, we haven't been doing jujitsu. <laughs> You know, we've been doing, we've been doing, you know, bag work, mitt work, stuff like that, trying to do everything. And, um, but now we've been able to get some, get some sparring going and everything. So it's actually helped me a lot from a fight. And, uh, we got five guys from the, our gym actually fighting on this one. It's pretty cool to have that many guys fighting on your, uh, the same card as you. So that's about the gist of the, um, uh, the pandemic with the training and whatnot. I've actually, uh, me and my girl cleaned out my garage and hung up the bag and just, we have weights in there, stretching machines, tra- uh, treadmill, and like I've been at home doing this and that, and I mean it's all different. It's just the new way, I guess, and I hope it. I hope it changes soon. You said there's five guys fighting on that same card, all from your gym. Does it feel weird? Like, does it feel like almost you're all obligated to win? Like, if one of you loses, it almost feels like a loss. <laughs> I mean, it. Uh... I was, we was all just sitting there the other night because I mean, there's every pretty much every guy from the gym right now. Like me, I says, you know, this is my, I think this is my third third fight out of the gym. This is my third fight, but like I said, we're a growing gym and we're really a, a jujitsu based gym, so there hasn't been a whole whole lot of fighters. But like we've been, you know, just people have just been coming from here and there, and we're starting to get really good recruits. Uh, you know. Of the five people, two of them are going to, like, shoot it off from the get-go here in Chattanooga I'm saying, in September. Like, two of them, and they're, and they're brothers, and they're, they're both Muay Thai kickboxing bouts. So, uh, it, it, watching them, you know, when you watch them, you, you know, you're in there. I get, But I get more nervous watching my teammates and friends fight than I do, than I do myself because I have absolutely no control over it. I just – I don't know. It, I – but yeah, yeah, yeah. If if if, if my team's four and zero by the time I come up to fight, definitely there's going to be some more pressure for me to take for me to take that strap home. Like definitely. You're uh, you're headlining the uh, the card. Does it feel any different than any other fights? Knowing that, I mean, your last fight of the night, it's an extra two rounds. Does it feel any different? It's the training camp's been a whole lot different. There's been a lot more. Uh, I've had a lot more help throughout the duration of this camp. There's a lot more people involved. Uh, and I think just due to the, the way the nature is of society is right now, like there's nothing really going on. So uh, in Chattanooga, 
Like you have Knoxville coming to Chattanooga. You have every bunch of places, people coming from all around, but when they're meeting there, like there's going to be a lot of people and it just sucks because like the attendance has been cut down to 900. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm trying to think right now, like we've got, I'm trying to think, We, what was your original question? I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of what we is there any added pressure knowing that it is a main event, knowing that there's a title on the line and that there's an extra two rounds? I was thinking, I mean, going back to the fight I had in March with Charlie, I felt like there was a lot more, a lot more pressure with that fight up until like this last two weeks. Now that it's starting to sink in, it actually, it actually is sinking in. Like, hey man, this is a five round fight. You've never been five rounds, and you, I mean, I've turned up the training for this fight. Um, uh, judging me off of my last fight, you wouldn't you wouldn't think I'd be able to go five rounds. I don't know if you got a chance to watch me and Brian Jackson fight, but uh, I think with the with with that win though is, I mean, it was I finished him in the second round, but we, you know, I think I've been kind of uh, picked out of the bunch with Jason King, and. Uh, for the 170, I'm three and zero, oh, and he's, you know, he's he's a he's a decorated fighter. He's got he's been 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 to Bellator. He's done this. He's done that. So as far as the uh, the level of like pressure for this fight, it's uh, it's about the same as it was the last fight as it was the time before. Because I mean, the pressure's all the same. Whether I mean now being at home is a little different. Being at home is a little different. Like if I'm up in Knoxville and it's, in, it's up at the you know up in Knoxville or Nashville or anywhere else for that matter you know Atlanta anywhere Alabama anywhere in the south region you know uh, southeast region uh, I don't I don't I don't know I have a really huge, huge problem fighting away but like when everybody's at home I come in and you know if I'm the last fight of the night you know you're there for five hours and you talk to a lot of people who are really close to you and uh, you know you just got it's hard to stay focused it is harder to stay focused when you're at home. You know, you, you just got to kind of push it all away for a little bit. And uh, I'm grateful to have my girlfriend. She's actually been helping me sell tickets and do everything for this fight. Like, this is the first time I've actually had somebody take charge and actually put an effort into helping me do something other than, um, you know, do, so all the things that I have to do outside the fight, she's been helping me with that. And I really appreciate her. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear that a lot from other fighters. Like, they always say, you know, that hometown advantage sometimes isn't an advantage in MMA. Mm-hmm. You've got people talking to you. People are asking you for tickets. People are talking to you nonstop from your family. Yeah. And you can't seem to, to get focused. So I understand that uh, 100%, and I, you hear it from, from so many other fighters. So so hopefully things will go well. What sort of uh, fight week preparations do you do you have, and how do you, like, get in the zone for the fight? I mean, I'm just, I still have a, I've yet to even grasp, uh, like a routine, routine ritual, uh, fight week thing. I just usually like, I just, I'm usually really far overweight, uh, <laughs> for every fight come Monday. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm still 16 pounds over. I thought I would be with at least within 10 by now. And, uh, so, <laughs> so right now I've been trying to like actually being that it's a five round fight, I know that like I need to conserve and and I need to, I needed to eat right for this for this camp. I needed to do the right things because this is a big fight and uh, this is a lot of implications on this fight. And I understand that, so I really uh, have been eating right. I've been uh, I've been training and running. I've been taking it serious. Being the hometown guy, though, like it is it is stressful and i'm glad i do have i've got a bigger support team now that i've moved i've actually joined the agm i i was a i was unattached for you know my first six my only six amateur fights and then my first pro fight is when uh, is when i started to go to the gym at gogi and it's just a good group of guys and i really enjoyed them so they ended up winning me over and i really love that place and i hope it helped them grow you know right down here Again, though, going back to that hometown situation, man, it's it's a lot more pressure than and, and it is. It, it's not always the, you know, you're always always the hometown favorite because there's a lot of pre- there is a lot of pressure. One of the uh, Valor is one of the organizations right now that's pumping out the most amount of fights. You've spent your majority the majority of your career there. What's your thoughts on them as an organization as a whole? Uh, Valor, they've they've produced they keep producing uh yeah a tremendous amount of fighters they give they give uh, you know young men and young women a chance uh you know 
on on the every levels you know they have the amateurs there and like tim Lloyd's the matchmaker there and he isn't gonna like you know he take he, he listens to everybody he's not gonna match a you know an, an amateur with an uneven amateur he usually gets uh some good ones out of there but uh you know a lot of guys from knoxville you see are coming out of the area <clears throat> and doing a lot they, they fight a lot in knoxville and they're trying to get more people in all the time uh right now as far as valor goes i really enjoy valor i'm i'm I like Valor. I like Valor. I like what they do. Uh, they're they have they have this they have this thing with Cotton Eye Joe. It's like a world famous Cotton Eye Joe up in Knoxville, and uh, like security there is great. They actually threw a show in July, and uh, during like the, one of the first people to do one a show during the pandemic, and uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, and I mean, like hats off to everybody that was at that show that did. Like I mean, so as far as Valor goes, they had one show in August, got canceled right after the July show, which was something, you know, we did. But, but you can't just have, like, fighters saying, hey, guys, you're going to fight, you know, August, uh, you know, 5th or whatever, what date have you. And then they find out two days before weigh-ins that, oh, hey, we can't fight now because this, that, and other thing happens. Man, that's, a, that's pretty taxing because that's the same thing that happened to me in March, but that's happening to everybody right now, like, all around the country. And as far as, like, the pandemic goes, um, I need, we got to get back to normal. Like it's got to get back to normal. Absolutely. So many small businesses are like going, going under and like, you know, I mean, take it Valor, they're cutting our attendance down from 2000 to 900. You know, they had to up the ticket prices and that's not just us. That's everywhere. You know, that's everybody's doing that. And I mean, with a lot of people being unemployed right now, I mean, it's, it's just, it's killer on the, the whole community. And, you know, Facebook just sent something out there the, the today actually saying how they're going to start censoring what we talk about period on October 1st. And I'm like, what happened to freedom of speech and freedom of whatever and everything? I don't know, but it is, it is what it is. It's a pandemic and uh, extreme measures are going to be coming big, big time soon. Another, uh, another organization that went and started pumping out events right after, uh, right, like right in the middle of the pandemic was the UFC. Is that the ultimate dream here for you is to, to make it to the UFC, make it to a Bellator, or is this just, you know, something that you do on the side for fun or what is the ultimate goal? Uh, just, I mean, like the, the only direction I've had in life is like towards just uh, martial arts. Like if I've not been doing martial arts, I've been in trouble in my life and that's just that's just the cold hard facts and that's you can look it up if you want but that's what happens when i'm not staying busy working or if i don't you know if i'm you know you know if you're gonna be a million if you're hanging out with five millionaires you know you're gonna eventually be a millionaire if you start hanging out with a bunch of bums you're gonna become a bum and you know i got home from college and you know didn't didn't hang out with cool people right people and then i like fell off for a little bit then i got back to the gym and realized hey this is where i ought to be at and um, just trying to set the right examples now and do the right things, you know, like just keep it and just keep that ball rolling the way it is. As far as Bellator or the UFC goes, uh, who, who, who doesn't want to, uh, you know, fight in the Super Bowl of MMA, you know, that, you know, the, you know, that's, that's, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, you know, contender series, it would be cool, you know, just to, you know, get that opportunity. And I mean, that's what I'm saying. These title implications for, you know, Valor fights, we're speaking about them and as a whole, yeah, they're great. But talk about the last three people that's won a title for Valor. Um, you know, David Robbins, uh, he's, he still holds the title right now. Uh, but Dahmer, uh, Dahmer is like, I don't know, she'll do their fight. It was a no contest. So, but both of those guys right there are UFC caliber. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, David, uh, David might've got a call not long ago for the, for the contender series, but he would he couldn't take it at the moment with work and what he's got going on in life right now. So he had to, he had to put it off for a later date, but Cody Durden just got, uh, just got the call to the UFC. And uh, fought Chris Gutierrez, right? And he, uh, they went, to, they ended up in a draw. Um, before that, you know, Luis Pena beat Kobe Wall down in Rome, Georgia, for the uh, for the lightweight strap. And you know, Luis Pena, you know, has been doing wonderful things. You know, I mean, he's been, become huge. Uh, so yeah, to, to, if you're if you're holding the title in Valor, I mean, you know, Gerald Mearshart, you know, he fought, he fought in he fought in Valor. OSP, he's right there. He's one of the hard down there in Knoxville. He, he's there. He's at every fight. He'll probably be in the corner with Jason King when we fight. It'd be cool, you know, getting a fight against OSP. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, OSP really has put uh, put put that area on the map. I mean, he's a he. 
I mean, yeah, he's fought John Jones. Like, it's just yeah. like, it's unbelievable. I, I, I'm a Tennessee Vols fan, too, on top of that. So, when he was, you know, he's a linebacker back here. And, I, you know, when he went to USC, I was, like, all all OSP, man. I was happy for him. When you, um, when you get things done on September 12th, what sort of turnaround time? I mean, I'm sure you want to just stay active now. I mean, the pandemic's kind of slowed your role a little bit. I mean, you had to take some time off. Everybody did. Are you, are you trying to stay active to get some wins together to, to get noticed? Or are you happy to just kind of take your time and, and ease your way there? Uh, I'm not looking past Jason King at this point right now. That's, you know, first and foremost. But if we're going to be, you know, if we're foreseeing the future, I mean, like, if you look into future fights with Valor right now, there's big names in it. There's Charlie Alexander fighting Junie Browning coming up October 3rd. Um, talks is in with me and Junie Browning fighting, uh, possibly, maybe. Uh, there's just, a, and, and, and if, you, if, if you're asking, yeah, that, that they're fighting at 155. And being that this pandemic's gone by, I was training for Charlie, and I got down to, you know, like, I got down in the 70s, and then after that, you know, I started going and helping a buddy of mine do tree work for a little a short amount of time, and I ended up losing a good bit of weight doing that. And it was a, it was kind of a good thing, you know. But then after I stopped working with him, started training again, I started getting that back. And uh, you know, my my weight is getting down there. So uh, you got you got you know you got David Robbins down there. You got a uh, Dahmer. You got there's and you, you know even even guys around here in Chattanooga, Bubba Cruz, one seventy. I mean, if I'm in the, if I'm to win something this strap, I mean Bubba, me and him go to the same gym and we train together all the time, and we discuss the possibility, man. Like he because uh, he's after the same goal I am. Who's not? I mean the UFC or you know whatever we've talked about it, you know. But uh, there's a chance that I could be going back down uh, and wait. Maybe I get that strap. Maybe maybe I defend it. Uh, but with COVID around right now, who knows what could happen? I've seen I've seen people get calls right now that um, that are uh, they're they're taking them and they're you know you got to take them. But and it's just it's rough too because like a lot of people can't go train. They can't do this. They can't do that. So I feel like a lot of the in the UFC fights right now they don't. Um, you're not getting to see the absolute best fighter. Right there, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying. I mean, like that. The, that that fighter can be. You know, what I'm saying like they may not be the best. He's not in shape. He's not going to be in shape. You know, they talked about uh, Max Holloway doing the Zoom workouts, and a lot of people, a lot of them are doing the Zoom workouts. But I just, I, I find it so hard to believe anybody's doing those. Um, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you could prep for a fight through Zoom. Like it just, it doesn't make much sense to me. But I mean, he looked great. If that's all he did, I mean, he looked unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna look into Zoom. I mean, damn, you know, this is a hindsight right now. I'm thinking, yeah, well, Zoom might be a good deal. I, uh, I kind of built this platform on two things. One is making matchups, dream matchups. Um, that being said, is there anybody, past, current, present, retired, doesn't matter, that you would look at and say, you know what, one day it would have been awesome to test my skills against someone like that. Yes, absolutely. The one guy it was, and, uh, and I was never a hater of him. I was a huge fan, uh, as you arrived Faber. When I was in college, he would come out to California love and he had any, you know, had the corn rolls and I was just, and I was like 149 in college. I was a smaller guy, but like, I don't know. I just, I just enjoyed the way he fought. He fought just, he fights, you know, just like I did. But that, it, did, it was just trucking all the time, and I just enjoyed watching him. And I always like, I wanted to test my skills against your right favorite in early age when I was in college wrestling. I always thought that would have been really cool uh, back then. You know, his prime, my prime, that would have been pretty neat to do. And the other thing I built this uh, platform on was making predictions. That being said, there was a huge title fight announced with John Jones moving up to heavyweight. That being said, Dominic Reyes and Jan Blahovic are fighting for the light heavyweight strap. I don't know how up to date you are, how much you watch uh, the light heavyweights go at it. But that being said, do you have a prediction for that fight? Who's fighting? Jan Blahovic and Dominic Reyes. I take Dominic Reyes, man. That is a monster right now. I mean, like, I, it's arguably he arguably lost that fight with Jones, and yeah, Dominic Reyes right there. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of him right now. He's he's doing good things. I love it. I'll ask you one last question, and then I'll let you go. Um, for people who haven't watched your fight, is there one fighter that you can kind of compare your style to? And uh, if there's one fight on your record that you're like, that's the fight that best sh uh, showcases who I am as a fighter, which fight would it be? Probably have to be 
honestly, I have I was five and one as an amateur. I'm three and zero as a pro, and I hate I hate I hate it. But this is my one loss. Um, my one loss, I, I, you know, that's the only one loss I have where I ventured out of Valor, where we talked about earlier. Most of my career has been there when I went to AFC and I fought a guy, and uh, I learned a lot about myself that night because I was five and zero uh, going into somebody else's backyard. He was one and two. This is a fight that I had known about eight months in advance, and I took in two fights previous to that, or, or I knew about the fight, and I took two fights before that, thinking you know, just I wasn't you know. Two fights, and then me and him fought, and uh, uh, it was a, it was a, it, I ended up, I didn't really train for it because he, I just, and and I learned a lot about myself that night. But the heart, and you know, I was, uh, I broke both hands in the first round, and uh, like the right off the rip, broke both of them, and uh, couldn't use them. So I basically just kind of tried to wrestle and was a punching bag for about four rounds. But uh, I, I gained a lot of. Um, uh, I guess fans that night down there in Alabama because a lot of people they know that because you know his name was uh, Trevor Peak so but when he won though everybody you know was expecting me to win and at the beginning I was I was winning and then I broke my hands and that's not an excuse but he ended up ended up uh, getting the TKO in the fourth round and because uh, I didn't even know it was five rounds I thought it was three rounds amateur fight I I didn't even know they called my name going out there and I was like well okay but uh, that fight. And then my last professional fight when I fought Brian Jackson, it's just like, I think that I, I'm just, I got a lot of heart. I got a lot of will. Uh, and, uh, you know, I fought Brian, he had an eight inch reach, reach advantage. Every time I felt like I was trying to touch him, he was touching me first and he was. And if I just knew once I could get in and get my shot, it's, you know, I'll, I'll come out, but I don't know. They, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not proud of it or nothing, but they said, uh, years ago when I was fighting, I, I fought, uh, I think I was fighting 55, and they said, uh, they said, you kind of look like a va- uh, a lightweight uh, Fedor. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's the, the, my body build and the way I look, like, just like stocky and just, I don't know, I'm built weird. So it's that wrestler build. And, uh, but uh, he said, that's what I look like, but I don't like to claim that. But it's kind of funny. It, 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 that is kind of what I look like when I fight. You know, I look for that power shot, and I, you know, and I do have, I, I, I'm a wrestler. Uh, you know, for, I don't know. I don't really have a comparison. I mean, I don't know. I, even on Tapology, I don't have a nickname or nothing, and I'm the only Greg Hopkins on there if you wanted to look me up. So, uh, speaking of looking me up, people probably ought to because I'm sure after this fight, I'll probably have a lot of targets on my back, um, and I'm sure of it. I love that. I love that way to end it, man. Um, if you could uh, add a nickname to your Tapology page, what would it be? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a degenerate. Uh, uh, all the time, I, I like gamble and play and goof around. I'm a clown. I like to have fun. So the people I've been around have given me so many great ideas that are not—they're too vulgar and too awful, and they're, some of them aren't even funny. And uh, but some of them have been really good. But and I can't even remember half of them. And I know I just built this all up, but no, hell, I don't have any nicknames. And I'm and I just just because like, and I was just thinking maybe the degenerate, but I don't I don't really like that either. So I'll probably pick one up in another. I mean, I've never. I mean, somebody's got to give me the nickname. I don't I don't want to give it. I don't want to have my own. I want somebody to give me one before long. All right, man. Well, uh, all the best. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. I know it's late, so I, I appreciate you taking the time. And all the best, man. I'm rooting for you. Well, let me. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm gonna get a uh, give a give a shout out to a couple of my sponsors here real quick and let know uh, let people know where they can find me. I, uh, you can find me on Facebook, Greg Hopkins. Uh, find me on uh, Instagram, Big Daddy Hop, and uh, uh, that's that's all you need for that. I don't have a Twitter yet, uh, but I want to give a quick shout out to some people who have been helping me out throughout this. I've got all all my friends and family at Agogi, my personal family, my girlfriend. She's been taking care of everything, selling tickets, and I just cannot like that's it's helped me so much. The first time having somebody help me doing this, and it's awesome. It's it's coming off, but sponsors, man, Memphis Street, uh, Memphis Street Barbecue, man, and I like I, it's hard not to eat there, man, because it's so delicious, you know. And I go there, I go there I, when I'm not training there. I go there. This guy helps me, and Big Paul, uh, Absolute Gutters, Best Home Builders, Crawl Logic, uh, C Susan. I actually went there today. Yeah, it's just like infrared race on it. It just it rejuvenates you. I've got R3 rejuvenation. They freeze me, and they 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 just they all that lactic acid comes and flushes out of your out of your blood and everything. It's pretty sweet. R3 rejuvenation. I appreciate them. 
uh, my biggest sponsor, Hemp House, dude. They, uh, they actually, I've got them on out there, dude. They, they've been above and beyond uh, helping me out, man, with like CBD oils and stuff, and just helping me. Just like I'm talking, I'm telling you, <laughs> I've had a lot of help throughout this this whole duration. It's awesome. Uh, Ink Expressions, um, the tattoo parlor in East Ridge, right down the road from where the event is held, dude. They're, uh, they're actually sponsoring the event too. Them and Hemp House both are going to be there. So uh, a lot of more pressure there for all of us. And uh, uh, one more is JBI Investments. It's, I told you I'm a degenerate, but these guys, uh, this, they did deal with a lot of stocks, you know, and, uh, and, and, and they do a lot of uh, analysis for sports. And MMA is one of them, and I talk with them on a daily basis about how we're going to make money this week and how we need to do this and how we do that. But uh, just a big shout-out to all those people who have helped me financially and then all the people who have helped me physically at the gym, uh, mentally at the gym, emotionally at the gym. And uh, my girlfriend, Megan, for picking up the loose ends at the, at, you know, walking behind me, picking up my, my jock strap, pulling my cup out, you know, doing this, doing that, helping me here. Uh, Mom and dad, everybody, um, if I miss somebody, I apologize. <laughs> and uh, uh, you too, brother, for giving me the platform to do this interview right here. Valor, uh, you know, Valor Fights, uh, Fighting Challenge, uh, Eric. Uh, Eric and Tim, dude, thank you guys. Uh, also, do the commentary up there at Valor, so you get to you get to hear this nasty voice. Uh, <laughs> you get to hear this nasty voice every you know first Friday of every month up there at Cotton Eye Joe. So it's pretty cool up there being in there with everybody. But man, I do appreciate everything, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have that strap by then. You know, September twelfth, we'll get it. I love it, man. Uh, these sponsors really do go a long way, especially for people on the regional scene or on these up and coming, uh, uh, fight cards, uh, sponsors play a huge part into MMA. It's mm -hmm. not like any other sport where, you know, there's a process without, spo without sponsors, without the proper coaches, uh, you know, some people will never get these opportunities. So very important to, to make sure we get those, uh, shout outs in there as well. And all the best, man. I, uh, I'm looking forward to your fight and, uh, man, September 12th. I can't wait to see what you can do. All right, man. I appreciate you, brother. All right, man. All the best. I'll right, we'll see you.